This is an image of Newton. Can you not hear me? Okay. okay. Now? Okay. So this is a portrait of Newton by William Blake. He's a 19th century artist, poet, painter. So it's a very powerful image and it leaves a very strong message in your subconscious. So if you look at the, if you look at the image, you can divide it into two, uh, two main parts. On your left hand side, you have this beautiful abstract pattern which symbolizes beauty and on your right uh, and on your right hand side you see newton involved in synthesis analysis and scientific method but the most important message that this image gives or what william blake tried to give is that if you are involved in the scientific method you ignore beauty around you so he had this thing he was against the enlightenment movement and he said that if you reduce something to numbers or if you decompose it, then you lose the beauty of that thing. So, so the message that William Blake gives, first is that scientific method ignores beauty. And the second message is that apparently Newton worked out a lot. So I don't know about the second point of view, but I cannot disagree enough with the first, me uh, first message. So I will make a case today that Science is one of the most profound sources of beauty and inspiration. Like anything, any other field of humanity, arts, poetry, music, or anything else. And because nature embodies beautiful ideas, nature works in beautiful concepts, symmetry, and everything, therefore, you can find science inside beauty as well. Science and beauty complement each other. So this is a Friday evening, so I will, let's just start our conversation with a glass of wine. So, what do you see here? You may say, ah, it's one slide before, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, so it's a glass of wine. <clears throat> so if I ask you what you see, you will say, I see glass, I see liquid, and I know that there's air molecules there. You don't see it, but you know it. So first, let's focus on glass. So in a true scientific way, in order to explain what glass is, let's first talk about what, not, what is not glass. So, ice cube is not glass. So, for instance, if I take a picture of you, all of you now, you are arranged in an orderly manner. If I take a picture of you now, you resemble somewhat like a crystal structure because molecules and atoms try to arrange themselves in a way so that they can minimize their energy. So you are in a way sitting in, in a configuration similar to crystal structure. But for instance, right now you have a fire alarm all of a sudden and all of a sudden, all of you randomly get up and try to walk up, uh, get out of the exit door. And then I take a snapshot of you. Then you will be arranged in a haphazard manner, in a randomly manner. And that is, in essence, what glass is. So what you do in glass, for instance, I take this quartz crystal. Then I heat it. And then I don't give it time to cool. I just cool it suddenly. I don't give the atoms time to arrange themselves. Then it becomes a glass. And that is what, it, the, so what you see here is a desert glass. You can form it by when lightning strikes in the desert. And then all of a sudden, the sand molecules don't have time to cool or arrange themselves back like they were. It cools randomly. And what you get is something like glass. So if, if you understand glass properly, if you, if you try to understand how glass is formed, then from then, from that, you can understand a lot about Earth's crust. You can, you can find out the age of the Earth. You can find out that Earth's crust is mostly formed of silicon and oxygen, which, if you think about it, is quite strange because the universe is mostly consisting of helium and hydrogen. So if you think about that, it will tell you about the, how you can form atoms through uh, stars. You can find out about the age of the Earth using, if, you, if you try to understand how glass is formed. And then from that, you can understand how solar system is formed, how planets are formed. You can understand that if you focus on glass. And then if you, if you have the wine glass in your hand, you rotate it, you will see that you can see rainbow colors inside it. So what is that? A glass a split light. And what is the, how can you use that? Uh, all, uh, you cannot even imagine astrophysics without spectroscopy. So if you want to understand the universe, if you want to understand heavenly bodies, you have to, have, you have to understand 
how you can use glass's property to split light and then understand the universe around you. So glass provides you an eye into the universe. Now, let's assume you rotate the glass and then you stop. What you will see is the liquid, liquid will keep rotating despite the fact that your hand is stopped. So what does that tell you? That is the law of angular momentum. Law of angular momentum, if you understand that, what can you understand through law of angular momentum? So after the Big Bang, as you all of you know, may know, you had just gases, just randomly distributed in lumps and everything. So, but if you see now, you see mostly empty space in space. So what happened? The gas molecules come together because of gravity. They attract each other. And they are randomly rotating in different directions. Now as they start to come together, and because some of them are randomly rotating in some direction, therefore they start to rotate as a body. And as they come together by gravity and they start rotating, they, they tend to rotate faster and faster. Like, for instance, if you, have, if you do skating, ice skating, you know that when you are spinning, and if you want to spin faster, you contract your hands. So, and then you will rotate faster. That is law of angular momentum. It tells you that the closer you get to the axis of rotation, the faster you will rotate. And that's what happens when gases come together. They rotate faster and faster. And now the original gas cloud, which was just distributed randomly, now at, at, as it's coming together, it has to minimize its energy, which is, I mean, every, every molecule or atom or every configuration, uh, atoms try to minimize their energy. So how do they minimize that? They cannot stop rotating. That's the law of conservation of angular momentum. So they need to flatten up. They flatten up and reduce their potential energy. So they become a disk like that. So that is how galaxies form, and that is how solar systems form. They, they form due to law of angular momentum. So this, this tells you a lot about how galaxies are formed. Now what you do, you take the glass and you put your hand on the top of the glass. So what happens is that rays of light come inside the glass and on the top your hand absorbs some light and it uh, emits large wavelengths of light. It absorbs the shorter wavelength and it emits larger wavelength. And glass is opaque to larger wavelengths of light. So what you have here inside the glass, if your hand is on top of there, you have a small replica of the greenhouse effect which you observe in Earth. And then if you also if you also consider how the rays of sunlight provide a gradient here, a thermal gradient here, or how air transports the gas from here, you can understand, you can understand in a crude sense how the weather in Earth works. Okay, let's move off to something more basic. So, have you ever thought about what is the probability that someone like you would exist. So when I say you, 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 you are a combination of your genes, your nature, and, your, and the environment that you got while you were growing up, your nurture. So when I'm trying to discuss what's the probability of you being born, I'm talking about, for instance, what's the probability that this unique genetic combination that defines you, what is the probability that, that someone, something like that would exist before you existed? So, so, so if, you, if you want to define that, if you want to, if you want to study that, you have to think that, okay, your gene combination is a combination, you're 50% your father, you're 50% your mother, so it comes, so you have to start from the point where your parents met. Then they met, uh, went on a first date, then they went on a second date, then they kept talking, and then they, they, they married, and then after that, they decided to, okay, uh, we need a baby. So if you, if you can crunch the numbers however you want, but even if you use very pessimistic, uh, or very generous probabilities of, okay, my parents had a probability of meeting one in, one in 20,000 if you consider the city and everything, you can include online dating in the equation as well, but still the number that will come out that will say, okay, there was a probability of you being born or existing right now, is almost zero, almost. Obviously you exist, so it's not uh, fully zero. 
Now, this is, this is the idea, okay, uh, of you, you think, okay, I am existing already, okay, that's okay. Now, think about all the people who are possible but never are born. Like, for instance, think about all the scientists who could, who, who could be here, greater than Newton, or all the generals more ruthless than Genghis Khan, but they were never born because their parents never met. No. Let's move on to something. We talked about life, not now talk about death. How many of you have not seen Lion King? Lion King, the movie? Okay, all of you. Wow. The Lion King. Seen, not seen, not seen. Okay, okay, good. So there's a scene in Lion King where Mufasa, Mufasa says, look at the stars, Simba. Uh, the great kings of the past look down on us from the stars. And so if you miss, uh, if you miss someone, so whenever you feel alone, remember to look at the stars. The great kings are there to guide you, so am I. So there are lots of beautiful reasons to look at the stars. I mean, one, for instance, your atoms, they all came from the stars. For instance, my atoms in left hand may have come from one star, and my atoms in right hand may have come from some other star. So it's very inspiring to look at the stars, but I'm not sure that looking for dead people is one of them. So after watching this movie, a father decides to take his son for a walk. He says, look at the star, son, when you miss her. Your grandma is up there. Now, if you are a cool kid, a kid that I would like to have, you would say uh, that 50% of grandma is inside you, so why should I look at the stars? I should look at you instead. So I personally think that that's more inspiring or that's more romantic to, than looking at the stars. So, I mean, if you miss someone, if you, if you are 50% your father, 50% your mother. And your father is 50% your grandmother and 50% your grandfather. So if you, miss your, if you miss one of your siblings or if you miss your grandfather or grandmother, you can look at your parents, you can look at your brother, you can look at your sister, you can look at your uncle, or you can look in the mirror. Because they are inside you more than they are there up there. Now, now I said that science and beauty complement each other. So that means that I look, when I look, uh, when I reduce something to its numbers, I find beauty inside it. Similarly, when I, I see something beautiful, I will also find scientific concepts inside it. Inside it. So this is a form of anamorph anamorphic art. So it's just, uh, does anybody of you know what an an anamorphic art is? Okay, then I need to explain it. So, it, I mean, you can recognize that this looks like an eye. So what anamorphic art is that you take, some, you take a deformed image and then you reform it using some special techniques. For instance, I know that this eye is deformed and it is, it, it is expanded. So if I want to reform the image, I need to, produce, I need to use a surface which is concave and then I need to implant the image on that surface. So what it will do is that now you will get the proper image. This is a very beautiful form of art. You can see it online and it looks very beautiful. Now, if I look at this art, I can just look at it as, look at it as art as well. But as I said, that this beautiful thing should also have some scientific uh, concept behind it. So what do I do? I say, I take the speed of light, I know that the speed of light needs to remain constant in the universe. So what does space-time do? It deforms. So because the laws of physics have to remain constant, so space-time continuum deforms so that the speed of light can remain constant. So you understand a main principle of general relativity by looking at a form of art. So that to me is, is it's very beautiful. So this is a line from Hamlet. It says, there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, um, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. So if you, if, you, if, you, if you read it once, and if you are a mystic, you might say, okay, this is an obituary for scientific method, and we should now stop, resign from the scientific method and just look at the universe in terms of its mystery. 
But read it again. If you're like me, it simply tells you there are things out there that we will never understand. So for me, that is the most inspiring thing about science, that there is always something out there to learn, to understand. Your life may suck. You, you may be suffering from depression or there may be something in your life that's not good. But you always know that if you wake up tomorrow, there will always be something new to learn. There's always something to look forward to. That to me is, is, the, is the essence of scientific, scientific method, that you can always understand something. We may invent cold fusion, we may reverse the aging process, we may find cure for cancer, but there, we may invent a warp drive, we may, have, we may harness the power of wormholes, but there will always be something to understand, to wake up and inspire you every day. So if you, if, you, if you use this mindset around you, then you can find really interesting things in objects that you never thought. So last time we went to a bar after that, after the talk, maybe we can go now, and then you can order a glass of wine, and then after having a few glasses of wine, if you look really carefully enough, or after having a few shots of vodka, maybe you will find a universe in a glass of wine. Thank you.